Hello everyone. Welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com and supported by Visdolia, an active learning platform. So this is the part 7 of diseases of immune system. In this section, we will be completing the hypersensitivity reactions where I will be discussing type 4 hypersensitivity. In the earlier sections, we have completed type 1, type 2 and type 3. So let's move on to understand type 4 hypersensitivity reactions. So type 4 hypersensitivity is also referred to as T-cell mediated hypersensitivity, which is caused mainly by inflammation resulting from cytokines. And these cytokines are produced by CD4 positive T-cells. And that's why it's referred to as T-cell mediated hypersensitivity. Okay, so it is these CD4 positive T cells which produces cytokines and that results in inflammation. Most often, the inflammation is chronic and distant. And the antigens uh, implicated in type 4 hypersensitivity can be environmental antigens as well as self antigens. To understand more about T cell mediated hypersensitivity, let us see this delayed type hypersensitivity, which is the prototype of T cell mediated inflammation. Here what happens, you know, there is a tissue reaction to antigens when it is given to an immune individual, right? And this tissue reaction is detectable within 24 to 48 hours. The cells which contribute to delayed type of hypersensitivity are T helper 1 and T helper 17 cells. T helper 1 is the one which is dominated by activated macrophages, whereas T helper 17 response is dominated by neutrophils, unlike macrophages from T helper 1 cells. So, what is the pathogenesis? As I told you, the first step is the activation of CD4 positive T cells. Remember, T cells will be in naive state, they have to be activated. So, activation of CD4 positive T cells, and then these become effector T cells. And then the second step is the responses of these effector, differentiated effector T cells. And finally, resulting in inflammation and tissue injury. So, let's understand this in detail. Let us assume that this is a naive T cell and you have an antigen which, to which these naive T cells are exposed. The antigen presenting cells, that is the dendritic cells, presents antigenic component, you know, to the peptide from this antigen to the naive T cell, which produces interleukin 2, which is an autocrine growth factor resulting in more and more of these T cells. And now these T cells are antigen responsive T cells, right? So these antigen responsive T cells further differentiate upon re exposure to antigen. Once and these antigen responsive T cells, as I told you, they differentiate into T helper 1 cells with the help of cytokines interleukin 12. And these T helper cells, as I told you, they are the ones which act against intracellular pathogens like some bacteria, viruses, promoting inflammation and also activating other immune cells. Further, these antigen responsive T cells differentiate into T helper 17 cells with the help of cytokines interleukin 1, 6 and interleukin 23 produced by these antigen presenting cells. And these T helper 17 produces interleukin 17, interleukin 22 and various other chemokines and cytokines which recruit more and more neutrophils and monocytes which promote inflammation. And this kind of response is important while defending extracellular bacteria and fungi, right? So, the T helper 1 tackles the intracellular pathogens whereas T helper 17 handles these extracellular bacteria. T helper 1 also secretes lots and lots of interferon gamma which promotes further T helper cell development. So, this is the basic pathogenesis of delayed type hypersensitivity. Once the inflammation is cleared, what happens? The effector T cells, they get transformed into memory T cells and these memory T cells are long-lived and they respond very quickly if the same antigen is encountered again. And that's the role of these memory T cells. Let's see what happens when there is repeat exposure to antigen. So then the T helper 1 secretes lots and lots of interferon gamma, you know, which further activates macrophages. And these macrophages are referred to as interferon gamma activated macrophages. Are. So what special characteristics these macrophages have? 
And these are the ones which have increased ability to phagocytose and kill various pathogens. They also express more and more class 2 MHC molecules on the surface and that results in increase in antigen presentation. They secrete tubonecrosis factor, interleukin 1 and chemokines which further promote inflammation. And lastly, they also produce more interleukin 12 and we know interleukin 12 is responsible for amplification of T helper 1 response. Okay, More and more T helper 1 cells are recruited. So, what are the clinical examples of CD4 positive T cell mediated inflammatory reactions? Two most common examples are tuberculin reaction and contact dermatitis. Let us see what tuberculin reaction is. After intracutaneous injection of purified protein derivative, Within 8 to 12 hours, in the injected site, there is reddening and induration, which peaks at around 24 to 72 hours. This is what happens. That's the induration at the injection site of purified protein derivative, which is peaking at around 24 to 72 hours. It finally subsides. So, if you take a biopsy from this site, what do you see? The histopathological features include perivascular accumulation of mononuclear inflammatory cells. Now, these are the intradermal blood vessels and you find lots of these mononuclear cells, lymphocytes and macrophages, right? That's called as perivascular cuffing of mononuclear inflammatory cells and you also see variable amount of dermal edema and fibrin deposition. This is what you see in a tuberculin reaction. Now, consider when there is a persistent or non-degradable antigen. For example, you know, tubercle bacilli, which is a mycobacterium tuberculosis, which colonizes lungs or other tissues. So, this has, this bacilli acts as an antigen, which is non-degradable and persistent. So, there is a very strong T helper 1 cell activation, right? So, once there is a T helper 1 cell activation, we know that it recruits lots and lots of macrophages. In the initial phases, these macrophages are just not enough to tackle these tubercle bacilli. What do they do? They get transformed into epithelioid cells. Okay, They have more cytoplasm, they have elongated pale cell nucleus and these are epithelioid cells. And they cluster together to form a granuloma. Okay, So, this granuloma is surrounded by a cuff of lymphocytes. And this kind of inflammation is known as granulomatous inflammation. I have discussed this in detail when I talked about I mean, granulomatous inflammation in my earlier video. So, you can just go back and then watch that video as well. The second example which you need to understand is contact dermatitis, which is an example of tissue injury resulting from delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction, which is a CD4 positive T cell mediated inflammation. One example you need to be aware is if an individual is exposed to this poison IV or poison oak. When, when I say exposed, it has to be in terms of contact, contact with poison IV or poison oak. These leaves contain, you know, orochiol, which is an antigenic component, which binds and modifies the cell proteins. Cell proteins means the proteins in our body and the peptides which are released from these modified proteins, they are recognized by CD4 positive T cells. Right? And they induce inflammatory response, which is clinically manifested by rash. And these rashes are often itchy and also result in blister formation. And that's why it's referred to as blistering dermatitis or vesicular dermatitis. Other examples of CD4 positive T cell mediated inflammation include rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, inflammatory bowel disease. Till now, what did we see? We saw CD4 positive T cell mediated inflammation. Now, there is another entity which is called a CD8 positive T cell mediated cytotoxicity. Now, what does that mean? Which means CD8 positive cytotoxic T lymphocytes, they kill the antigen expressing target cells. In the, in the earlier cases, what we studied, there was inflammation. Whereas in these cases, we see that the antigen expressing target cells are Killed. So, how are they killed? See, after identifying the target cells, the activated CD8 positive cytotoxic T lymphocytes, they kill the target cells by means of apoptosis. Now, how does this happen? Let us see this. See, these activated CD8 positive cells, they express FAS ligand, which activate FAS receptor, which is expressed on the target cells. And we know fast receptor, fast ligand interaction is the one which activates the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. The second mechanism includes 
formation of perforin and granzyme complex. So once this complex is formed, this enters into the cytoplasm, and within the cytoplasm of the target cell, the perforins, you know, they help in release of the granzymes from the complex. And these granzymes cleave and activate caspases, which further result in apoptosis because we know caspases are the most important proteases which result in apoptosis. So, what are the examples of CD8 positive T cell mediated cytotoxicity? I mean, where the cells are killed, the examples include the most common one being type 1 diabetes. It can be graft rejection, it could be reaction against various viruses, and even destruction of some tumor cells. Let us see more examples of T cell mediated diseases. First one is rheumatoid arthritis, where the antigen involved is the collagen or citrullinated self proteins. The manifestations include chronic arthritis and inflammation. Multiple sclerosis is another uh, disease where the antigens involved are the protein antigens in myelin. Example, myelin basic protein. What happens here is that there is demyelination in CNS, central nervous system, with inflammation, resulting in paralysis and even optic neuritis. Type 1 diabetes, as I told you earlier, where the antigen involved are the antigens of pancreatic islet beta cells. Okay, and inflammation of these cells result in insulitis or chronic inflammation of islets, where they result in destruction of beta cells leading to diabetes. Inflammatory disease is another condition where the antigen involved is various enteric bacteria. Okay, you know, you, they respond very aggressively to normal enteric bacteria, so resulting in chronic intestinal inflammation. And the last but not the least is psoriasis, where we do not know what antigen is implicated, but they manifest with destructive plagues in the skin. So, this completes type 4 hypersensitivity. If you have watched this entire video, I would request you to, you know, just click on the link below in the description as well as in the pinned comment, where you can solve various multiple choice questions from Visdolia. I have tried Visdolia, and this is an amazing platform where you can learn very actively because you have various practice tests given you can even get feedback ultimately it's fun to learn so in summary we did learn about type 4 hypersensitivity reaction the mechanisms along with some examples thank you for watching if you like this video hit the like button do comment if you have any queries to ask do not forget to subscribe if you feel that this video is useful and please do share thank you